Hey, Las Vegas, congratulations. John's here. Uh, Matt's going to join us very momentarily. He is in Los Angeles, flew out there this morning, driving back. Don't know how that worked out, but driving back uh, this evening. We're just going to wait for him to hop on. But uh, congratulations uh, to you. You have a hockey team in the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Did we ever think we would be here at this point talking about a 4 nothing sweep over the LA Kings. I, I I feel like we need to start this over, but nobody hopped on on anyway. So we'll <laughs> now start it again. We had a little Wi-Fi issue. All right. So who thought we'd be here um, celebrating a sweep in the first round over the LA Kings? If they weren't our rivals before, they're our rivals now. That's for sure. Remember what Drew Doughty said, right? By the end of the season, the Kings will be a better team than the Golden Knights. Not true. Clearly not true. So really unreal. All right, here's Matt. Matt, I'm going to bring in. Matt's apparently in the car. So this should be this should be terrific. Matt driving from Staples Center to back to Las Vegas. I think he has work tomorrow. Hopefully he can sleep in. All right, Yo. here we go. Oh, man, look at this shot. I am just, uh, I'm really enjoying this, Matt. Yeah, I'm dedicated, man. Oh, shoot. I totally screwed this up. Hold on. I got to unplug it. I can't hear you because I jacked this up. Let's try it. It's got to start. All right. There he is. All right. Go for it, man. Hey. Are we good? You got me? Now. Can you hear me? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get in an accident. Are you on the 405? What do you want? I'm on the 10 right now already. I got out of downtown pretty quickly. And don't worry. I'm the... Both my hands are on the wheel here, all right? Yeah, okay. I got, yeah. I got, I got my cameraman in the passenger seat with yeah, me. Yeah, you have a photo with you. I like it. All right, so let me just get your first reaction um, to the atmosphere there. I mean, to, <laughs> I, I, what did it feel like to, to, to close this one out? What was the atmosphere like at Staples? Man, you know, it was, it was a little disappointing, the atmosphere, as far as what we got out of the Kings fans. I, like I said before the game, I think they were resigned to the fact that they were going to lose this game. They tried to get into it a few times, and actually they had they had a kid that I, I can only guess they show on the screen a lot. Um, a kid with Down syndrome got on the screen late in the third and was dancing to the music and having a good time, and the fans really got behind him. So I, I'm assuming he's up there a lot. But that was literally the biggest pop that we had from them for the entire night. There was nothing out of the game that got them going. Um, a few uh, There were some moments where those shots looked like they were going to go in, and that was a little nerve-wracking, but... You know, other than that, there was really nothing from them. It was, it was, it was quiet to say the least. Even fans yeah. sitting next to us were like, "Where are you at, Kings fans? It's quiet." Yeah, and I guess I'm not surprised, right? Um, you know, complacent's a word I've used a lot, right? In our podcast today, you can find that on Spreaker. Just search "Sports Adrenaline Las Vegas." But I mean, how how do you not be complacent when you have a team that's won a couple Stanley Cups that doesn't think anything of Las Vegas? Uh, before the season, Drew Doughty, you know, and his quote, which will now be infamous in Vegas Golden yep. Knights history, saying by the end of the season, we know who the better team will be. And, yeah, we certainly did find out who the better team was uh, this season. But, you know, I, I, I don't blame L.A. for being complacent. They clearly were. They got punched in the mouth. Um, and now, you know, not to jump ahead, because we have plenty of hockey to enjoy uh, this Stanley Cup right. playoff season. But next season... Uh, the Golden Knights and the Kings are going to be a hell of a rivalry. Um, I'll give you this stat, and I mean, clearly you saw him in person tonight. I can't imagine what it was like to watch Marc-Andre Fleury. 127 shots, 124 saves in the series. Unreal. Give him a key to the city. Uh, really right that at this a, moment. That's an the mayor should wake up. Number. Mayor Goodman should be sending a key to wherever he lands when he gets off the plane. That's insane. 127 shots faced, 124 saved. That's incredible. That's incredible. And that's that's four full games plus a couple overtime periods in there as well. I mean, that's just obviously the MVP of the series. There's there's no doubt about that. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, man. Walking out of that building, Kings fans are salty. They were – and yeah. they're, they're already dismissing the Sharks, which there's a lot of hatred there for, for the Sharks from the Kings. But all we heard was good luck in Nashville. You're not going to get by Nashville – and just uh, and a lot of other things that I can't say on here, but uh, they were they were some salty fans coming out of there for sure. Yeah, interesting. And Nashville, I believe, is in a bit of a series uh, with the uh, 
with the Avs. I think if the Avs win the next game, that series is tied 2-2. So, um, you know, Correct. pretty pretty interesting. They're they're kind of counting their, uh, what is it, their tickets before they hatch. Uh, hey, I mean, you know, looking ahead, and, and I will go, kind of go back and forth here, but you bring me to a point that I wanted to make. I mean, you know, if you're talking about the Avalanche coming back to beat um, Nashville, and you're talking of, I mean, really, that's the that's the one team, right, that you'd be really nervous to face moving forward. Obviously, I'm not going to shirk on what the Sharks are doing because they're playing excellent right now. But Nashville might be kicked out of the playoffs altogether um, if they have one bad game. Well, the two the two most dangerous teams, in my opinion, would be Nashville or Winnipeg. Winnipeg's a good team as well. I, I think that they struggle against both of those teams in the series. Not to say they can't win them because they can't. They play both teams really well during the season. But I, th- I think those are the most dangerous outs for the Knights, Nashville being the more dangerous of the two. Let's not look past the Sharks. I mean, they're, they're, they're up 3-0 in the series. They're going to get by the Ducks. But there, there were moments throughout the season where that was a difficult game. They beat them in overtime. They lost at their place once. So it's not like they're going to breeze through the Sharks, at least I don't think. I didn't think they would breeze through the Kings. And, you know, even though it was a – a bunch of one one goal games they still swept them so it's still going to be a tough series to get by the sharks but i think they will but yeah i I don't see i don't see the avalanche having enough power to get past when or to get past nashville and then you know western conference finals anything can happen i mean just to say that we could be in the western conference finals as a city is incredible you know four wins away from going to the cup as it is we're only eight wins away from going right to the cup. isn't that nuts nobody That's in nuts. a million years would have thought that six months ago sure and, and, and i jumped a, a little bit too far ahead right thinking that far ahead but um, a little bit watching watching this series and watching this team play defensively um vegas never really known as a top tier defensive team uh, and i get it every game was a one goal game i get it but you're talking about a, a pretty recent two-time stanley cup championship team a team that maybe not the same team as it was in 2014, but still a team with some pretty big established stars that can score. Um, has Vegas turned itself into a, a defensive threat now, do you think, with this series? I do, and I think I think Vegas can play great defense. They just don't always do it because they play great offense, and a lot of times you have to, to sacrifice a little defense to get those rushes and, and, and get into those offensive zones in a jump. So – they have the capability of playing defense. The one thing this team does well is they have a lot of really good two-way players. I'm not the one thing. That's one of the many things they do well. But they have a lot of really good two-way players who are willing to, to just beat you up on the back check and then get after it into the offensive zone. Um, they just, they've just become a very relentless team, whether they're up, whether they're down, whatever it is, chasing down pucks. The reason this was a bunch, they were a bunch of one-goal games is because Jonathan Quick was just – Amazing. He was Jonathan Quick. He was two-time Stanley Cup winning, gold medal winning goalie. He was incredible in this series. Not to say that L.A. didn't play a good game or good games throughout, but Vegas just outplayed them from start to finish for the most part. And without Quick turning in the kind of performances that he did, these aren't even games. I think I think the sweep would have been even more egregious. Um, James Neal talking about the game or after the game. Uh, and I watched the broadcast. If you're jump, jumping on a little late, Matt is in L.A., um, now in the car, driving back to Las Vegas. Uh, so Matt got to see this thing in person. But James Neal said after the game, you know, he found out about a week after the uh, the Predators were eliminated from the postseason last year that he was going to Vegas. You know, and the question was, hey, you wow. know, what you expect, what you feel? And he didn't know. His first phone call clearly was to, to Mark Andre. And, you know, Mark andre said it from the beginning. Hey, Josh, thanks for hopping on. Scott uh, commenting, we had a coffee spill during the podcast. Scott says, don't spill a coffee. And the advice from Scott earlier, don't drive through Compton in that jersey. Okay, so please, yeah, no kidding. please stay safe uh, out there. But James Neal just said, hey, you know, I, I mean, he didn't know what to expect. Mark andre clearly was the one, right? And, and everybody texted him, right, when they knew that, that they were coming to Vegas. He was a borderline playoff team. He said, why can't we make the playoffs? And the only the only people that really thought this team had a legit chance, and, you know, I was optimistic, you were optimistic, but really the only people that thought that they had a legitimate chance to do anything this season was the team in that locker room. Who knows what George McPhee thought 
But, I mean, I think it's just phenomenal that they're really proving themselves right now uh, and, and smashing all the haters, for lack of a better way to put it. Yeah, the guys in that locker room believed it from day one, and they, they were able to come together as a team quicker than anybody really thought that they could. Uh, that locker, you've been in the locker room, I've been in the locker room, those guys are loose, they're having fun, they're engaging, uh, they're enjoying the moment, they're enjoying the city, they like being part of this team, and they like playing for each other, and it shows out there on the ice, this is a team through and through, from, from Flurry all the way down, this is an absolute team, they play like a team out there, and they just ran through a, a two-time Stanley Cup winning team in four games, and took care of them on their ice, I mean, that's just, you just don't you just don't do that in year one it's incredible yeah uh what do you make of every game being a one goal game i mean are you concerned about this quick. you know it's john no it's it was jonathan quick he he was outstanding throughout this series you saw some of the saves he had tonight even 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 knights fans have to go wow that was that was impressive he was great the thing was flurry was even better Flurry was even better than Quick was through the series. But the Vegas offense was better than the L.A. offense, so he had to work harder. Quick had to work harder than Flurry did for the most part. The scoring chances were just – there were so many great chances for the Knights today, and there was nothing they could do about it because Quick was so good. So I don't put a whole lot of stock into a bunch of one-run games. That's the kind of games – those are the kind of games that the Kings play. This is a defensive team that likes to beat you up and grind you down and – try to win a one nothing or a two to one game they're not looking to get out and score five goals because that's not what they do they played their brand of hockey in this series and somehow some way the knights were able to do it better than them yeah and, and you bring that up but first period was all uh all kings right i think the shots were 14 to 8 i mean la dominated that first period just tell us what you yeah. saw in the turnaround between period one and period two well there's about four minutes to go in the first period and I looked at my brother-in-law and I said uh I said man if they can weather this storm for the next four minutes and get out of this period with a 0-0 score they'll be in good shape because they've taken the best shots already from the Kings and I don't think they're going to have enough to sustain this kind of pressure for 60 full minutes and sure enough they were able to get out of there at 0-0 and there you go four minutes into the second period they get the, the first goal and only go of the game and just rode that out all the way so you know, they, they, they took the, the Kings' best shots. Flurry was amazing, and uh, they didn't blink. Yeah, uh, phenomenal again last two periods. And, and, and I've said, you know, this numerous times throughout the season, but resiliency is something that this team has really shown. And the ability for Gerard Gallant and this team to make adjustments in a game, right? And, <laughs> I mean, sorry I'm digressing here, but it's as a Vegas sports fan, you don't see a lot of change whether it's the running Rebels or whether it's UNLV football, right? You usually see the same game plan, first half to second half. But it's really, really um, refreshing to see a, a coaching staff and a team that can get beat. And, and the, the Knights clearly got beat again throughout that first period. Go into the locker room, come out with a completely different attitude, and turn a 180. And I think that's, that's, that's a rare... Um, rare uh, thing that any team can accomplish right it's probably something that's gonna completely help throughout the, the rest of the Stanley Cup playoffs no matter who they face and that's why I'm not really that concerned no matter who they play whether it's the Sharks or the Ducks uh, in the second round um, I, I'm not concerned based on what this team can do from one period to the next you know I wish we, we could have been at the press conference because I would have liked to last the lawn if that was part of the game plan knowing that just like in game three, the Kings were going to come out just on fire, aggressive, hitting anything that moved. And if the game plan was just just absorb it, just take their best shots, you know, don't relent, don't let anything into the net, let them punch themselves out, and then we'll get into the second period and we'll play our game because that's, that's what happened. That's what happened in game three, a little bit to a lesser extent because they weren't able to get onto the scoreboard in the second period. But that's pretty much what happened in game three. And then obviously tonight they just – they came out in the second period on fire and pretty much dominated. Oh, we lost Matt. We'll try to get him back. I don't know. It might have been his photographer. Uh, curious if you're watching, where you're watching from. Um, I saw a video of some people at the D. I'll try to get Matt back on here. Uh, people at the D, uh, they were celebrating a Toshiba Plaza. I think I saw a shot of, of that on the broadcast. If you were watching from Toshiba Plaza um, out there, let us know. Matt. Oh, yeah, there, hey, there we go. We're good. 
Your photog. Yeah, Where, for a minute. Brother-in-law is the photog. What the heck's going on here? No kidding. He's doing a great job. I don't know. That's good lighting. Yeah, too. he's just killing it. You got good lighting. Well, we uh, got his. We got his camera phone. We got his his flashlight on. And then yeah. we got, he's holding my phone. Yeah, no, so. th this is good, man. This we got to be professional here, High John. production value. Again, if you're hopping on, yeah. appreciate it. Give us a like on our page. Matt is driving home from Los Angeles as we speak. I'm just in my living room. I enjoyed the uh, the game from the comfort of my own home. Uh, again, Marc-Andre Fleury, if you haven't seen the stat, I'm talking to the folks at home, Matt. Um, 124 saves on 127 shots. The Golden Knights play an excellent Excellent, excellent defensive game. The entire series, they didn't need all these goals. Fleury gives up three goals in four games. You think they? Do you think that Mark Andre can keep this up? Uh, yeah. I don't know if if you're going to see him go through what 14 periods and only giving up three goals, but I, he seems to be on a bit of a mission, man. I think I think he wants this. I think he wants this cup maybe more than he's wanted any cup in his life. And I don't know if because he feels slighted, which has been kind of a, a lot of the a, the theme around a lot of the guys, is they feel like, you know, how could you leave me unprotected and let me go to the expansion team? And they played with a big chip on their shoulder. Or if he's just, you know, decided I'm going to rally the troops around this city and around this team and we're going to go out and we're going to do this thing and prove everybody wrong. But he's he's playing outstanding hockey. I expect to see more offense against the, the Sharks. The Vander Kane is playing incredible hockey in that series right now. So I I assume we're going to see a more wide open brand of hockey, something the Knights are a little more accustomed to playing and something they're better at. So I'm sure Fleury will, will let a few more goals go through, but they, they're still the better team in my opinion, and they should go on to win that series. Yeah, I, and you bring up a great point that I'll get to in a second, but a few comments here. Um, is that David Perron in the car? Oh, you, they're saying you're a David Perron clone, according to Angelo. Uh, Jake, uh -huh. dad saying, is, I'm assuming Chad won't be sleeping tonight. Um, no, Matt's driving. Matt not, as long, driving. not as long as he's holding that camera. Yeah, exactly. Right. And if he's getting tired, too bad. Uh, too bad, Chad. Nice job uh, on the camera. Melissa says nice work on the camera. Um, Scott they're Winter. All, all complimenting you on the camera. With a, good, <laughs> with a good fact here, and I didn't realize it. Knight, Knights had not won a one nothing game all season, but they've won two and four playoff games. I believe that's accurate. I don't remember another one nothing game um, that the Knights came yeah, out on I top do. of. I think. I think they beat Nashville one nothing. In okay. Vegas. Okay. And that, I thought that was unless they got an empty netter yeah. late. I think it was one nothing, but I could be wrong. Too bad, Chad. Sports. Somebody from the Sports Adrenaline account is is chiming on. I'm assuming that's Rich Jacobino hopping on. So the point you bring up um, about Mark Andre, right? And I I tweeted this out uh, during the game. <laughs> Pittsburgh in their grand plan, and you know they're playing really well right now. I get it. They gave. They gave the Golden Knights a second round pick in 2020, and who knows how that's going to pan out. They gave the Knights a draft pick to take him in the expansion draft. What kind of chip do you think that puts on his shoulder? And Flower, you and I have talked to him extensively all season, and we're getting to know him, right? We, we didn't know him at all, uh, save for a, a, you know less than a year ago. Um, sweet guy, really enjoyed talking to him. He's great to talk with. But I wonder if he has a mean streak, and I wonder if this triggered the mean streak. I don't think there's any question the way that he's playing right now. And you mentioned it with a huge chip on his shoulder. But you can't even tell. The guy cracks a smile with everything. You think he's playing with some sort of uh, chip or determination or maybe mean streak if he even has one. He absolutely has a mean streak. If you listen to the guys in the locker room talk about Flurry when he's out on the ice, they say he's one of the biggest trash talkers in the NHL. Don't, don't try to come in on him and put a shot on net and let him save it in your face because he's going to tell you about it. That's, that's the kind of guy he is. He's a competitor. He's fiery. He wants to win. Like you said, super sweet guy, very nice, one of the coolest guys to talk to in that locker room. Very funny, really, really witty. But, man, get him on the ice and he's a different guy. If he's out there smiling, it means he's having fun. And if he's having fun, that means you're having a bad day as the other team. Yeah, how, how do the Vegas fans do celebrating, Matt? Because I'm curious. I know L.A. fans were salty. Did Vegas kind of go overboard, though? Because, you know, we want to be the classy fans in the NHL. No, there was I, – I didn't see any trash talking. It was a lot of go nights, uh, a lot of flag waving and brooms and things like that, just having fun. The only the only trash talking that would go on would be in response to Kings fans, just, you know, oh, the, the Knights suck and this and that. And they're like, dude, you just you just got swept and shut out on your home ice. Like, that's that was the extent of it. But, you know, it, not, not any – 
not any venom being spewed from the Vegas side. It was just a lot of a lot of cheers, a lot of screaming, a lot of fun, a lot of happy fans walking out of Staples Center tonight. Yeah, uh, Sean Tempesta, it's so sweet. He's commenting. I'm just reading some of these comments and keep them coming. I really want to know where you guys watch the game at, um, to be honest with you. Uh, Aiden William, with the possibility of some Eastern Conference games going seven games, do you guys think, oh, this is a long question, do you guys think the long break may affect the Knights going into the second round with being unable to start until all round one games are complete? Momentum is a heck of a drug. Great question and something we certainly want to address. So they'll get some rest at some point, right? Uh, but so will the Ducks or the Sharks if this thing goes four games. What do you think? Well, yeah, if the Sharks win tomorrow night, then they're going to be on the same amount of rest minus one day that the Knights are on. They'll probably play the next series starting Wednesday, I think, next next week. So I don't think it affects them any more or less than it would affect the Sharks. It does give guys time to heal, time to rest. I mean, Tony's – how many times has Tony talked about how, how grueling this series was going to be for the, the Knights? And yep, the Kings great are point. Beat them up, and, and they're not going to be able to play in the next series. They're going to be too – too hurt and sore and blah, 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 blah. Well, now they have six, seven days to sit down, relax, take as many ice baths as they need and get ready for the Sharks and just come out of there completely healthy, ready to go. Yeah, I can't wait. And and I was telling Tony on our podcast, you were on our podcast earlier before uh, the signal dropped and we had some Skype issues, yeah. but uh, I was telling Tony, you know, I, I, I predicted this, this sweep and I said the next time the Golden Knights come back to Vegas, it's going to be some sort of a celebration and there will be fans at City National Arena or there will be at the airport. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, what kind of momentum do you think the fans can really – and I mean, they've been doing it all season. you got to think that clearly next time this team gets on the ice, they're going to have plenty of practices. I'm sure they'll get a day off. I'm sure Gerard will give them one day off. Uh, but maybe when they get back on the ice on Thursday or Friday, boy, City National is going to be an amazing atmosphere. Oh, man, the place is going to be on fire. It's already standing room only most of the time for practices. I can't I can't imagine what it's going to be like now coming home off of a sweep. And I mean, come on, guys. They're, they're in the playoffs, and they haven't lost yet, and they're going to round yeah. two. The Vegas Golden Knights are in round two of the playoffs, and they've never lost a playoff game. That's unthinkable at this point. But we, we, we talked about it the other day. Every series – that this team advances, it's going to get progressively more crazy with the fans and with T-Mobile and with the buzz around the city, which is hard to even think about because it's already so nuts right now. You're seeing Golden Knights gear everywhere from one end of the country to the other at this point. So, sorry, I just blocked the camera there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, every, every single round, it's just going to get more and more and more crazy out there. Yeah, I got a couple more talking points here, and then we'll let you focus on the road. Again, that's Matt Gutierrez driving back from Staples Center in L.A. back to Vegas. I'm here in Vegas, of course, in my full uh, Golden Knights regalia. I mean, it's hard not to. I want to talk, give us some perspective. Again, Matt, you grew up here. I'm a native of here. Matt's a native as well. I mean, so we completely have full-on right to be fanboys in this situation. Um, the bandwagon here, Matt, I don't really consider there being a bandwagon. It's a first-year team. You, I think you have, a, you know, by way of it being a team from scratch, you have a couple years to hop on the bandwagon. So are you opposed to the country or maybe some Golden Knights fans hopping on late a little bit on this bandwagon? Or are you completely open and you're like, hey, come on aboard. We're accepting you with open arms. I heard a great line on this. Uh, I think it was I think it was yesterday. So Ken Balky from Sinbin was on the Kings podcast after Game Three. So I listened into the podcast, and one of the guys on that podcast said, when talking about bandwagon and and whether or not Vegas fans were bandwagon fans and things of that nature, he said it can't be a bandwagon fan right now because it's the inaugural season. It's you know, they didn't have a team last year, even if you cheered for somebody else. This is the first year that you can be a fan. So that being a bandwagon fan isn't about when you jump on the bandwagon. It's about when you jump off the bandwagon. So the bandwagon fans that are already here that we don't know about yet will disappear whenever the Knights run into trouble. That's when you'll know right. who the bandwagon right, is. Right. But right now, you're just enjoying the ride. You, you can't you can't not have fun with this team at this point. And those, like you talked about, you and me and, and – everybody else we know that's born and raised in the city you have to be a fan it's impossible not to be and i talked to a lot of kings fans tonight 
and told them I used to be a Kings fan. You know, I, I cheered for them during the two cups and I hate the Sharks too and all of that stuff. I said, but I'm born and raised. There's no way I'm not going to be a fan. And they were completely on board with that. They understood it completely. I mean, there's no way you can't be a fan at this point. Yeah, Brian commenting, sweet baby, Las Vegas Golden Knights, go Knights go, of course. Um, everybody's hopping aboard. Uh, give us some perspective, right? And we've kind of talked around this. I just, I don't know what to, what to say that's, you know, profound at this point. I just didn't think this team would be here. I thought, hey, we'll have a great, you know, we'll have a first season. We'll win some games. We'll go to T-Mobile. We'll have some fun. And I was fully on board with the Bill Foley plan playoffs in three cup and seven you're looking at a cup in one season I, I still I I mean it's really hard for me to process this I don't know where you're at on this but legitimately if if the NHL is not woken up to this team at this point they need to right now because the Golden Knights are a definite uh and, and they're proving or they're they're living up to I guess the uh, what the sports books are saying that they're the favorite to win this whole thing we may have lost Matt here but that's okay he froze Dead zone in L.A. So Matt's in L.A. Would love to hear your comments um, for you guys watching this. You know, I, I still don't know what to make of this. Uh, and I don't think it's anything that anybody in the, uh, in the front office fathom. We lost Matt. We'll try to get him back. back. But, uh, you know, I, I just recommend to all of you folks out there watching that are on the bandwagon um, and by all means, welcome to the bandwagon. Savor every minute of this because I did not think the team would, would be to this point. Again, I'm a Vegas native. I was just excited we'd have our first major professional franchise in Las Vegas, and that was good enough for me. A great regular season was good enough for me. Now we're in the playoffs, and, and you know, do we call this a dominating series? Well, it sure looks like it's 4 nothing. These are all one-goal games. But um, into round two of the playoffs, did not see this coming, and – in a round two where the two potential opponents are two teams in Vegas beat three out of four times in the regular season. Don't look too far ahead here. Cause again, playoff hockey, as everybody says, and it's true. And you saw it in the series playoff hockey is a completely different brand of hockey. So you can't just, just um, jump past the ducks or the sharks. The sharks are playing excellent in the series clearly after uh, yesterday's eight, one win. Um, so don't look too far ahead, but again, savor this and enjoy it because who knows? I, I, who knows, honestly? Next season, you could think that this team might be better than it is last year, but you're talking about all this magic that's, that's come in. Um, you're talking about uh, this tremendous start to the season. You're talking about the home opener um, where they score four goals in 10 minutes, right? There's something magical about what this team is doing. Um, the chemistry is, is, is amazing, right? There's no chemistry... I don't think in the NHL that equals what this team is doing. Again, uh, all these players from all over the country and all over the nation, all on a mission to prove people wrong. And they're continuing to prove people wrong. How long does this go? When do they finally run into a team that legitimately takes the Golden Knights seriously? Um, Heidi saying, hi, Heidi. Thanks for hopping on. My first game was October 27th. I didn't get season tickets. Uh, after that was hooked, bought, bought a holiday package and just can't do anything else. This team is amazing. They have heart and speed and can't wait to go to the next game. Uh, your sentiment, uh, Heidi, thanks for commenting. And if you're just watching, give, us, uh, give our page a like because we like doing this kind of stuff. We want reaction right after games. You don't need to wait for a 10 o'clock newscast or an 11 o'clock newscast if you even watch the news anymore. Um, but we want to give you immediate great reaction. Uh, Matt Gutierrez, again, he's driving back from L.A. Let's see if we can bring him back. No. We may have lost Matt, but that's okay. We'll keep this going as long as we can. Um, but give our page a like. Uh, we do a Facebook live show every Thursday night, and we'll have one this Thursday at uh, 7.30 p.m. Uh, we've got our own studio. Thanks, Rich Giacovino, for putting up the studio for us. But it's something new. We're just a Facebook-only show. Uh, it runs about an hour. We cover sports in Vegas. We don't go national. We just cover what, what matters to Las Vegas and what matters to you guys. Um, but to get to Heidi's point, Man, how many people have I met that are, you know, scrambling for season tickets? And if you are, good luck at this point. They're gone for next season already. Um, spoke with somebody. This was a couple weeks ago when the Golden Knights um, were releasing their, their uh, season tickets for next year. And it wasn't that many. But somebody said they were a Pittsburgh Steelers fan or they had friends that were Steelers fans. And finally, after a 22-0 year wait, they finally got season tickets to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Boy, I, I mean, I can't fathom that happening in Las Vegas, but 
Um, if you have your season tickets now, savor them. Uh, if you're trying to get season tickets, hopefully you can. Maybe you can get a partial season ticket package. But, uh, yeah, there it is, Heidi, uh, e- echoing what I just said. Uh, partial season tickets, that's fine. I went in on season tickets on day one. I'm so happy that I did just as a Vegas fan and supporting what happens in Las Vegas. But me and a bunch of my friends, um, friends that work over at Fox 5, uh, Ted Pretty, Les Crifton, we all went in um, because we're crazy about this city and this team as well. So we have season tickets. I renewed them for next year. Um, we're getting our playoff seats, which would be great. Um, so it looks like, you know, we'll have about a week at least um, between now and when the next round begins. So it'll be interesting. Get out to City National Arena if you haven't been there. I'm sure most of you maybe have at this point, but those practices are open to the public. Man, this is going to be fun. And it really is a love affair between Las Vegas and this team. Um, welcome aboard the bandwagon. Again, Mark andre Fleury, if he hasn't gotten the key to the city yet, um, he should when he lands uh, in Las Vegas tonight when the team lands. But maybe Mayor Goodman or somebody um, will do that soon. Uh, let me see if I can find Matt again. Maybe his camera guy, uh, his arms were falling off. But uh, one thing, and again, I really do want your thoughts, you know, and if you're afraid, <laughs> if you're afraid to be embarrassed uh, with me reading them out here, I, I'm open to anything. I'm not really a, a critical guy to your comments. I welcome them. But uh, disappointed to, uh, for, for one thing, disappointed in the lack, and I know we see it a little bit, but the lack of signage just out and about uh, celebrating the Golden Knights and their playoff run. Why are we not seeing banners on the Las Vegas Strip? And I'm going to be uber critical of the county. This is Clark County that controls the Las Vegas Strip. I'm going to be so critical of the county until they freaking spend the 20 grand or whatever it takes to just put up banners on the palm trees. Do something. I don't care what it is, but something needs to be put up. Yeah, Lady Liberty is great. The puck in front of Caesar's Palace is great. But every single property on the Las Vegas Strip needs to have some sort of physical, and I'm not talking about a billboard sign that says, Go Knights Go. That's great. I want to see streamers. I want to see Golden Knights flags flying. I, that's what I want to see. And that shows that this community is truly a, 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 a community that's coming together around this team. Uh, like I said, it is a love affair. I think that the, the, the Strip has a, a, a massive, massive opportunity here to show how much they they are a part of this community. I haven't seen enough of it. Uh, again, Lady Liberty is great. What Caesars has done is great. But you've got properties like um, the uh, Palms. Where's that? Uh, I, I mean, just put something on the side of the building. Spend the freaking money. You know, just just go ahead and do it. Um, uh, the airport, Terminal 3. Follow me on Twitter, at John Castanino. You'll see that uh, the airport had Go Nights Go on some of the terminal signs out there. That's great. That's what I, I, I like to see more of. Um, as we progress through the playoffs. And it's not too late. So the, the county has a week before the next series. Throw out the freaking signs. I don't know. That's just my two cents on that. But uh, Las Vegas, savor this. Enjoy it. Um, this is rare. Uh, don't get spoiled on it. Uh, mom, Mom's chiming in. I agree, son. Come on, Vegas. Let's get it done. And, and they can get it done. I mean, again, if Mark andre continues to play the way he's played, there's no reason that this team cannot roll into the Stanley Cup, and all bets are off when you get there. But, um, you know, um, enjoy this because who knows if it'll happen again, when it'll happen again. Uh, And this team is really, really uh, turning this into a magical season. I mean, we know it's been happening before uh, with October 1st and just everything that they fed off of um, from that. But, uh, you know, just to get to this point, didn't think it was going to happen. I just was going to be happy with a team coming to Vegas. So uh, I'm going to sign off. Lost my, lost my uh, co-host, Matt, who's driving back from L.A. Hope Matt drives safely. Uh, congratulations, Las Vegas. And again, tune in. Give us a like, please. I'm not begging for likes. It just would be great for you guys to, uh, to follow what we do. Um, we love covering our Golden Knights. I'm in the locker room. I'm credentialed media, and I'll be at the next game. Um, so you can follow me on Facebook. You can follow us on uh, on Twitter as well, Sports Adrenaline, or it's Adrenaline LV on Twitter, shameless plugs. And uh, we'll be back on Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. with another Facebook Live. Um, hope to catch some of you guys then. And go Knights, go!